Well, welcome to the Nuggets of the Secret Place. My name is Robert Pears. I'm glad you're joining as we continue to look at the story of Abraham from a Secret Place perspective. And I thank you, Father God, in this episode, part five, that we would discover that you are a covenant-keeping God and that as we see you, we become like you. I thank you for daily fresh manna, Father, from you to strengthen each believer in their walk. Holy Spirit, you're our teacher. Classroom is in session. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart, and teach us this word today, and let it impact and change us. Father, in the name of Jesus, and the church said amen. Now, we are looking at chapter 17, and of course we just saw where Abraham made a major blunder, where he had birthed Ishmael. And of course we saw Hagar run off. It then says then after this, you know, God is a God who redeems and restores as we see. And at the age of 99, God has another visitation with Abraham. And it's an important time because Ishmael is 13. It's a time period where Abraham has to decree over him uh, that sonship, his rights, his place. And God turns up to declare the heir, turns up to declare uh, the covenant that he has. And every time you see that God has these visitations with Abraham, he always expands the pegs of his tent. He always brings with him fresh revelation that strengthens uh, the name of the Lord God and that he's a covenant God. He turns up, and I want you to see here, at 99. And it's, of course, this prelude because we're about to start a new, a new century where he's going to be 100 years of age. And it's just that time period just before. And Abraham is about to enter a new season of his life where he's going to have a child. And he's about to step into this purpose that God has for him. You know, many of us need to realize that God has a timetable. And he's bringing us on a journey. And along this journey, he has appointments. He has moments. And if we'll just stay faithful, keep pressing on, at the appointed time, the breakthroughs will come. The promises will come through. So in Genesis 17, verses 1 through 8, it says, I am God Almighty. And I want to just stop there because he says, I am El Shaddai. We see that, of course, uh, in Psalm 91 that we're standing on. That we come into the secret place of the Most High under the wings of El Shaddai, the one who's more than enough. And this is important because Abraham is looking at his circumstances and saying, it can't be done. And maybe you're looking at your circumstances and saying, it can't be done. And you need to get a revelation of El Shaddai. And God, when he turns up, he always expands, as I said, that revelation of his name. Gives greater depth to it, greater vibrancy. And he brings something that's now and important to us right where we're at. So that we can see that he is the one able to do that which he promised. So he says, I am God Almighty, El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face, and God talked to him. Don't you just like when you come to the secret place and God talks to you? You have communion, fellowship, not just opening the word and mentally receiving, but talking where there's revelation that's making known the heart, the character, the name. And he talked to him and says, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you will be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but you shall be called Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come forth from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. He says, I will give you and your descendants after you the land in which you've been traveling, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So he turns up, and again, he increases. He says, I'm changing your name because... Abraham has been a good father. He has been an honorable father. We see him train men up. We see him do things. But something changed. 
And with every visitation, every encounter in the secret place, we become more like our Father. And He's the Father of many nations. And all of a sudden, this covenant of exchange occurs, and He becomes such a partaker of the divine nature that He starts to be changed. His name had to be changed. He had to align with the name. See, in a covenant, there's an exchange of names. And God says, you've got to change your name because you've got to be like me. And he becomes a father of a multitude of nations. Not just was he going to have a son, but he was going to have a son who would give birth to a great nation. And that also he would be the father of not just one nation, but many nations. Listen to this. In Romans 4, verses 16 through 22, Paul said, For this reason it is by faith, in order that it may be in accordance with grace, so that the promise will be guaranteed to all the descendants, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, A father of many nations have I made you, in the presence of him whom he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. In hope against hope he believed, so that he might become a father of many nations, according to that which had been spoken, so shall your descendants be. Without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body, now as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully assured that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Therefore, it was credited to him as righteousness. That promise is yours. Through Abraham, we, he's our father. We are heirs and co-heirs with Christ. And we have a covenant-keeping God. And we've been brought in by the blood of Jesus through faith. And I'm grateful that our God, as we lay hold of that word, of his precious promise, God speaks it. And we receive them by faith. They partake, we become partakers of the divine nature and change us. They lift us. God always lifts you. He lifted Abraham. Every encounter lifted him. God is not trying to make you feel guilty, not trying to, you have to earn this thing. The spirit of religion always wants to put you down, where God wants to always lift you up. He always wants to expand you and show you something greater. And as you walk with him, you are changed and become blameless. You are transformed as you walk with him in the secret place of his presence, where you hear him speak, where his words carry authority. So that Abraham, as he discovers you are the almighty God, he no longer looked at his body. He no longer looked at his circumstances, which up till now had dictated and up till now caused him to make mistakes because he was more moved by the limitations of circumstances. But as he hears the covenant keeping God speak to him that I am more than enough, I am more than enough. He realized that his circumstances had to bow to the authority and power of heaven. I pray that today, as you come into the secret place, whatever you're facing, whatever trial, difficulty, challenge you're facing, <clears throat> as you cling to him, as you go after and hold fast his covenant word, hold him to his promise, that you realize that he is El Shaddai. He is more than enough. That he is more than able. He has got to become bigger in you as you give glory, praising Him. As you consider not, consider not these things, but realize that you have a God who calls things that be not as though it was. And He will speak promises that in the natural do not currently exist. But as you by faith believe and receive, He is able, as you walk this journey with Him, to change you so that you are, are in the right place at the right time, that you have the character for the call and the promise, and the right time he brings it forth for his glory. He wants to demonstrate his glory through you and do something that's so much bigger. He wants to take nobodies like Abraham, like you and me. As we walk it out and changed in the secret place, receiving of his nature, becoming like him as we see him, bringing on the earth great glory. We have a purpose. 
We have a destiny just like Abraham. As we each encounter, receive, as with each encounter, changed and transformed, we are moving forward. And there's coming a day where we'll stand before him and the book of Acts is finished. We'll be in that book and it will be recorded. It doesn't matter if it was something great or small. It's about being faithful. It's about the obedience. And it comes forth as we dwell in the secret place of his presence. As you press on holding clean to him, building your life upon his name, not on what circumstances say, not on what people say, you build it on the name. Amen. Realizing that he's a covenant God. And with every revelation he brings, it always underlines, always strengthens this word that's a covenant word. It always makes known with greater depth and understanding his name, his faithfulness, and that he does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Well, I pray this episode has blessed you. If it has, would you please like, share, subscribe? And I'd love to hear what the Lord is sharing with you. Would you write a comment statement? As you do, you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google. And I want to see as many people blessed, you know, strengthened for the walk daily. I pray this series, these daily messages, we're going to try to do them all every weekday, if the Lord leads, to help you fresh man from heaven so that you can live boldly and have a now word every day from him. Amen. Thank you. Be blessed. Be encouraged in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.